Hi everyone! Before we get started with today's video, I want to tell you about a very special project that I just finished. I've written an ebook entitled Seeing the Forest Through the Trees. It's a book, as you might guess, about photographing tree and forest subjects. This has been my favorite subject over the years, and I'm sure many of yours as well. In this book, I discuss my approach to photographing trees and forests, different locations, different weather, times of day, times of year, and aesthetic considerations, technical considerations, and so much more. I know there's something in this book for everyone. Well, one of the most exciting parts of this book for me is that master landscape photographer Charles Kramer has written the introduction for this book. I've known Charlie for many years. He's been a mentor and a friend, and I'm thrilled that he would lend his name to this project. Now, if you don't know who Charlie Kramer is, I'll leave a link below to his uh, information, and you should really check him out. He's an incredible landscape photographer, master printmaker, tremendous educator, teaching workshops all over, and I know that you'll enjoy seeing his work, and I really encourage you to check him out. Well, you can purchase this ebook right from my website. I'll leave a link below, or you can just go to the website and find the ebook's link there. It's 66 pages, illustrated with over 100 of my photographs from all across the country, and I sure hope you'll enjoy it. So, thanks for taking a look at that, and now let's get started with today's video. I hope you enjoy it. Well, good morning. I'm out with the Intrepid uh, this morning in one of my favorite uh, nearby wooded areas and I've come to work on a subject that I've walked by many, many times before and I've been watching it for probably several years and I finally decided that it looks about right and the conditions are about right. So I'm going to give it a shot this morning. Uh, this will be a black and white image and it's a soft, quiet light this morning and we might even get some rain while I'm here. Uh, but it's just a nice little scene of some uh, fallen trees going up and down and trees in the middle. And so I just thought it was really an interesting little arrangement and I wanted to give it a try this morning. So well, let's get going and see what I can capture. One of the issues with this composition, uh, and one of the reasons it's taken me a while to sort of figure out what to do here, is there are a lot of vertical trees. And um, depending on where I'm standing, I can line all those trees up so they kind of just look like one tree, or I can move a little bit and they all kind of space out, and uh, so you can see a lot of different trunks. And so it's just an issue of trying to decide exactly which camera placement is going to be most effective. And I'll probably actually try maybe two different arrangements today just to see which one I like best. The other thing I'm planning to do, uh, because the ground is all covered with this uh, deer moss, which ends up so light in the pictures, I thought I would uh, shoot doubles in the way that I would uh, indicate normal development for an image and then a minus one development with hopes of sort of softening some of that, that contrast. So we'll try that and we'll see what happens. So the exposure is 4 seconds at f45. This is my 200 millimeter lens. So with reciprocity, it's 5 seconds. So to do the n minus 1 exposure, we give twice the light, an extra stop of, of light, and then we reduce uh, the development uh, at the lab. So uh, that's uh, going to be an eight second exposure, uh, which with reciprocity is 12 seconds. So now I've moved the camera a little bit to a different position, put on the 135 lens, and you can see I've added a little bit of a, a shield here. I had a little bit of flare coming in, because uh, there is bright sky just above the picture. I'm keeping that out for the most part. Uh, there might be a few little 
uh, bright spots, uh, you know, peeking through the forest that I'll have to just spot out. But anyway, I was getting a little bit of flare, so I've just added this little clamp and a, and a spare dark slide here and very carefully positioned it just uh, before it, you know, vignettes into the frame, uh, but it, it blocks that light nicely. Well, it started to rain a little bit, so I put one of these uh, umbrellas over the uh, over the tripod. It's one of these uh, funny shaped angular things that, that uh, clamps to the tripod, and I'll uh, I'll link to, to this below. This is a pretty neat device uh, that allows you to, to work under the camera and keep it you know relatively dry. Uh, one other thing also is that when I, I switched to the wide angle lens, I also uh, did some lens fall. And that is so that I could um, uh, keep the camera back parallel to the trees so they don't converge as much. So it, that's basically tipping the camera up uh, to do that. And so I had to lower the lens in order to frame the picture the way I wanted. So anyway, just a couple more sheets of film here. And then I'll be done for the day and be really eager to get this film sent off to the lab and see how it looks. Well, I got packed up just in time. It's really pouring now. I'm glad I brought all my rain gear, but it was a fun morning to uh, work in the forest and try my hand at this image that I've been looking at for probably several years, and finally I thought the conditions were right, so it was nice to try it, and also fun to have all the rain gear and try it with, with all the rain, try to keep things dry, and even though I did keep the camera and film dry, all the other gear is still just kind of wet and damp, you know, from the humidity and everything. So now I have to get home and lay it all out and get everything dried out. And then, of course, pack up the film and send it off to the lab. Can't wait to see what I got this morning. Well, the negatives uh, turned out very well. These are the uh, normal development negatives and you can see there's plenty of exposure there and uh, they are all sharp and so now it's just a matter of proofing them and taking a look and seeing what we really have here um, it's kind of hard to tell always with a negative on a light box that's why we proof uh, so we'll take a look at that in a minute but I'm um, very happy with the uh, normal development ones now let's take a look at the the minus development So I don't know if you can tell from this video, but they do look a little uh, more dense. Um, but in the proofing, um, they do show a little bit less contrast, which is which is what I was uh, hoping for. So again, these are all uh, well exposed, lots of detail, uh, very sharp, of course. And so I'm pretty happy with how these turned out. Now, after that. Uh, video ended. You, you may remember it was uh, pouring rain and there was actually another angle that I wanted to try but I couldn't because of the uh, the rain so I went back another day and tried another angle that I sort of spotted but just couldn't do because of the weather and um, I just moved over to the left of this composition and that allowed me to um, bring this very strong leading line in. And so uh, I've done that as well, and these were uh, just developed normally. So anyway, uh, everything looks good here, and these are nice and sharp, and um, have all the detail I needed. So now let's take a look at the proofs and see if we can tell what we actually got. So here's the first proof sheet. And uh, actually, let me talk about these a little bit. So back in the darkroom days, I would take uh, four four by five negatives, lay them out on an eight by ten piece of paper under the enlarger, uh, make an exposure, and this would be a proof sheet. And so it allows you to just uh, you know see what you have in your negatives because it's really hard to just judge a negative on the light table. And so you would typically proof them in a little bit softer contrast to just kind of reveal all the detail, just sort of lets you know uh, what you have to work with. So that's what I did here. I just laid the four negatives down on the scanner, made a single exposure, and, uh, and printed this. And so now I have an exact approximation of what I used to get in the darkroom. 
and actually um, these would get uh, three hole punched and go in a three ring binder and I have um, binders like that one for every year all the way back to the early 90s so it's kind of a fun thing to do again in the digital age just to re recreate that it's nice to have a physical uh, proof sheet to look at so uh, these look really fine and um, I ended up going uh, with this exposure and that's the one I'll show you. I decided that I liked some separation of these vertical trees that I talked about in the field. Uh, this is the one where I lined them all up and uh, to where it just looked like one tree. But it doesn't quite tell the story of these fallen logs sort of being trapped in between the trees. So um, I, that's, I went with that and I like these two back here. I like the little magnolia tree uh, in there and some palmettos <coughs> coming in here. And so um, that just had all the, the pieces that I was really interested in. So anyway, um, this, this is the exposure that I went with. But uh, let's take a look at the, uh, the uh, N-1. And you probably can't tell uh, on the video, but this was the slightly softer contrast. And um, so again, everything you know looks fine. And um, uh, I did go, end up going with the, um, with the normal development, I think, but um, the, the one thing about this whole setup that I'm, I'm not really sure about, and that's this tree going off here. It just feels like it's leading off out of the picture, and I don't know, it's possible that this exposure minimizes that the most of all of them, because you don't really get as much of that tree, but it still kind of leads off. So. Um, when I went back on the second day um, and, and photographed that other angle, this, this is the angle that I uh, worked on. And you see that tree now is minimized. It doesn't quite le curve and lead out of the picture as much. Um, and you get this neat leading line of this tree going in here. So um, that's what I ended up going with is, is one of these exposures with this uh, with this leading line going in. So those are the two that I worked on, the one that I showed you from the previous proof sheet and this one. And so now let's take a look at the finished images. So that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.